Yeah, mate, I'm really excited. Obviously, um, this event here has been uh, wonderful today. Obviously, seeing all, all the all the coaches, captains, and obviously star players from every team has been unreal. And obviously, listening to Ellery, Ellery and Josh Warrington talk before really got the the juices flowing. So, really excited to play. Must be great because we, we all know how great rugby league is. But from people from other sports like Josh Warrington and, and Stuart Pearce here today to, to tell other people, it, it must be nice to get that recognition. Yeah, it's obviously it's obviously great to hear such quality athletes from another code talk about our code in such such positive light, and to hear them say the things they said, obviously about being an honest game and, and everyone being humble and down to earth. Something the rugby league doesn't get enough credit for. We're usually getting um, sort of our names not tarnished, but dragged through mud a little bit for being arrogant and, and whatever. So it's great to hear such star athletes from other codes talk about our game in that sort of light. Yeah, Salford fans have taken you to their uh, hearts. How, how do you you found your relationship with them so far? Yeah, I, I honestly love them as much as they've shown the love towards me. It's been a um, it's been a crazy journey, mate. And it's only sort of just begun, really, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, they're they're a huge reason why I decided to stay at the club, and, and I really want to help be a part of something that gives them a lot of a lot of hope going forward and a lot to cheer about. Um, I know we get bagged out a lot for our fans and that we don't have many, but they're as loud as anyone and. Um, at both our trial games, we, we've had about 2,000 each, which is which is pretty good. Opening one grandstand too, we've only opened the one, and and we've filled it both times. So that's only positive moving forward, and hopefully we can give them something to cheer about this year. The way you play, obviously a, a very exciting style. We'll obviously, hopefully bring some more people in. Ian Watson, your coach, saying you're looking up rather than down this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We 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 can't really go down from last year, can we? We didn't finish where anywhere near where we wanted to finish. Um, and our goal is to definitely move up the ladder and, and move up significantly if we can. And then in terms of how we play, I think not only me, but the other players that we recruited, Kenny Seo, obviously you got Junior Seo, you got Niall Levels, Robbie Louie, all can play that free-flowing, expensive style of play. And, and we've got the people there now that really want to play with the ball and obviously um, move it around. So hopefully that puts some bumps on seats for sure. I think that's the thing. We've just got to focus on, on actually what is on the field. I think if you if you want to look for a negative in anything, you'll always find one. I think there's there's so many positives in rugby league that we we kind of shy away from. I think Wayne Bennett was uh, said it that we're we're embarrassed of, of our game, and, and I don't think there's any need to be. I think if you look at the game 20, 30 years ago, it, you know it's it's great that we're spreading the game, but you know there were no teams anywhere else, and no one were embarrassed. The, the grounds were full, everyone. Love, love the teams and I think that's what it's about get out and support your teams be proud of where you're from and, and who you support and you know we'll try and do our best on the field and make it exciting to watch Can I see Danny is that the biggest win in your coaching career? Oh dear me um, no I mean I, I, I wouldn't say so it's, it's definitely up there it's definitely up there to come to Leeds and win is is uh, pretty special, and the way they did it, uh, make, it always makes it makes it nicer to come back And um, but I think yeah the, the, this, this side of They've they've, uh, they've made me happy on many occasions with some big wins. They've put me through the ringer a couple of times. So I'll give them that. And um, but yeah, they, they've, um, they've they make they make coaching quite easy at times. These boys, we, we are hard to work, and a lot of credit to them. What would you thought if you hadn't got the try then? What would you have made of the performance tonight? Um, I'd have probably yeah been a mixed bag. I, I told the boys at the end then. I thought I was I was disappointed with how we played for for 30 minutes of that second half and. Um, I always feel like I come in real negative and then the boys are all buzzing and I come in like, like we'll nega train there and say, oh, you weren't good enough for 30 minutes there. And I think that would have been the same messages as well. We, we was we was pretty poor in that second half at times, but that's credit to how, how well Leeds played. So I'd have been disappointed that we wouldn't have got the win because I thought we, we deserved it. Um, but yeah, over, we, we got the job done and uh, the rest is history. And the, the eights, obviously been through the eights twice as a club. How much, of a, how much has that helped you now coming into Super League? I think so. The boys have experienced some big games. They've experienced um, tight games, playing against Super League opposition. That's why you know I was a massive fan of of the eight system. It prepared us uh, well for going into to the back end of them seasons and, and playoffs and million pound games because we'd we'd come up against quality Super League opposition. You look at the teams we played, like Warrington and Leeds in them in them eights, and it's great experience for the boys and exposes them to that Super League level, that next level, and that sort of stood them in good stead. Coming into this season, you know some lads are still finding the feet and and getting there up to that week in week out of playing quality teams. You know we've had Saints, Wigan, Leeds, you know a few weeks on the bounce, and that, that's a, that's a shock to the system. And but the boys keep boys keep working hard and raising the game for it. So credit to them. And back to back home games to come now. It's a big couple of weeks, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it's, it'll be nice to get back down to uh, back down to Ealing. 
and uh, back home we, we have we just like I said we focus on on just one week at a time and that that's all next week we we, we um, they're they're playing really well at the minute they're full of confidence as well and they're a very strong side as well, so we've got to we've got to enjoy this and then back to work tomorrow. Might there be a sneaky beer on the bus on the way home? No, none at all. No, I don't drink. <laughs> You, you questioned your players a little bit last week during that first half performance when the game slipped away. You started with the same 13 tonight. Is that you giving them a chance to put it right, or is that you not pretty much. any other options? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I looked at uh, you know, opportunities there for, for players there to uh, get it right. As I said, we've got ourselves back into that game, and we're in front. Last six minutes, we lost that game. What was so that's not the starting team. Yeah, no, no. What was said uh, at the end then? What was the mood like? The guys must be. Yeah. I didn't say too much. Yeah, you know, just we'll have a look at it. I think it's. Uh, I think it's. It's. It's for. Uh, it's for the sheds. What I spoke about. Not here. It's been clear. Whenever I see your team this year, you've had periods in games where you've been really, really good. Is that the challenge now? Turning the tens, twenty, thirty minutes into a full half at a time. Yeah, we certainly do. We've got to recognise those moments and, and what's needed. Um, I've sort of said it from day one that, you know, again, I'll, I'll show them and, and talk about, you know, those, you know what, what's need to be done and have a look at it. But, you know, you either, um, you know, say the players, or you get yourself put in, in this game, you actually, there's moments there that finds you, you know, and, and you've got to make sure that you can nail those moments. And we didn't, that last six minutes. There wasn't much in that first half. You know, again, the only try was from a kick where we stopped. You know, they batted it back in there. So other than that, we actually defended our line quite well. Three tries from last play quick, uh, kicks can can take the uh, conference out. But we just got to you know talk about that rest. That rest until you got the ball back. We showed some really good uh, resilience on the try line. But those last plays, and you know, as I said, I'll, I'll revert back to that six minutes. You seem really, you seem quite shaken. I mean, we're used to you being a winner, and you're not used to losing. Is this hurting you personally, more than professionally, or shaken? What do you mean shaken? Sorry. You, see, you, know, you seem a little bit rattled. Though. That's just my opinion of it. Uh, that's okay. That's your opinion. I'm not rattled. Um, as I always do as a coach, I'll have a look at uh, what was involved in there, and the players need to know. So, nice opinion. David, you said. That last six minutes has, has hurt the group. In, in that sense, how difficult might it be to pick them up from a defeat of this manner? Going to have to. It's a long season, so I don't know. I don't know you guys, but there's, there's going to be no white flag. Let's have a look at the plays we've got. Let's look at what they can do, and uh, I've, I've set aside that. So for me, uh, the way I'm in at the moment is just I'm not in a good mood. So I wouldn't say rattled. Uh, I'm not in a good mood. I mean, were you surprised at how quickly Leeds pulled the trigger on David Ferber? Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, I was, I was, uh, he's, a, he's a friend of mine, he's dead. Um, you know, I don't want to really get too involved, I just thought it was a bit, little bit too early, he's in, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's got a squad there that, you know, I'm particularly, like, probably low on confidence at the minute, and, um, but yeah, I just think in games is, is a bit tough. Um, and that's just the, the business that we 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 find ourselves in, and you know, I wish Dave Dave well. I texted him um, yesterday just to wish him wish him well, um, and hopefully catch up with him before he uh, goes back to us. On, on the back of that, Chris, is, do you think it's getting a bit too much like football with, with how quick some things have been due this season with Leon and Richard Marshall as well? It seems to be changing a bit. I don't know. I, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Probably. I think uh, I don't know, got it right. I know I'm biased, but you just got to have some some bit of patience. You know, we I think after the 2016 semi final, we lost eight. Uh, sorry, we lost nine on the on the bounce with the uh, with the super eights, and you know Michael could well have easily just said enough's enough, um, but it stuck stuck by me, and we got the recruitment right, and it's it's been you know very positive since since then. Um, just the nature of the beast, isn't it? We, <clears throat> that we're in that kind of industry where we've got to perform, we've got to perform well, we've got to win matches, and um, players win your games, coaches lose them, and uh, that's how it's always been. That's how it's all, you know, always going to be. And yeah, it's a cutthroat industry, I suppose.
and I was there. Obviously, you've been in that position, haven't you, with Paul Kerr, which was mad again. So yeah, yeah, yeah he's. It's, yeah, it's a tough position to be in. It's a, it's a tough position to be in. It's a very lonely position when things aren't um, when things aren't going particularly well, and you think about a lot of things and you question yourself. And, and I'm pretty sure that, that Dave has over the last uh, la last few weeks. But you know, just a, a time time issue. I think just needed a bit more. Probably just needed a bit more time to and um, you know, made, needed a few more plays maybe. But uh, yeah, listen, wish him well. And, you know, hope he goes on to Australia and, and picks up another job. Chris, when you look at that, I just wondered how great play to obviously have Michael like say and, and to be at this club. I think it's Yeah, I'm very grateful. Very grateful. I'm grateful, you know, the opportunity. He didn't have to offer me the uh, job in the first place after a nightmare start to, to two thousand and, and, and sixteen with, with OKR and obviously getting beat in the Challenge Cup. 50, 50 points to nil. Um, you know, he didn't have to give me the job. There were a lot of good other other candid candidates that applied, but yeah, really fortunate. And um, you know, I can't thank him enough e enough for it. But yeah, we've got a great relationship. Um, you know, I know what I can say to Michael. I know what I can squeeze out of of Michael, and um, and I know what to what what to ask for, when to ask, when to ask for. Went to ask for it, um, so yeah, a good relationship, and um, it's been a it's been a real real good move for myself personally. Magic weekend, a few days away, a new event, a new sorry, a new location, a new stadium. Um, yeah, how, how excited are you about the yeah. turn just a week after Barcelona? Yeah, no, no, everybody's uh, asking me how excited I am, and uh, the answer is, you know, very much so. I. Um, I uh, was I had the privilege, I had the good fortune to be out in Barcelona, and I just said to people, woke up that morning, coming out of the hotel, walking up to the new camp, felt like a kid on his first trip to Wembley. And, I, and Anfield, you know, has a similar feel. Whilst I've been there lots of times in the context of football, I just think uh, it is something special. There is real heritage, magic, mystique. You know, you only have to go back two or three weeks to see what Anfield's all about. So for us to be uh, borrowing it for a couple of days is, is terrific. I also, I'm really excited about going back to Liverpool and I think it's uh, it's a brilliant city with its own distinctive personality, and uh, you know Anfield, you know as fans have pointed out, isn't right in the heart of it, and it isn't always as easy to get back into the city. We'll do loads of great stuff around Anfield, but you know I think just a short trip down the road is is one of the most famous cities in the world. So if you put all that together, then it is exciting. Obviously, uh, you know as you mentioned, it's been a somewhat controversial decision because Newcastle is so popular with fans. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about tickets? Are yeah, no. 40,000 plus? No, no, we're, um, I mean, I don't know if it's controversial is the right thing. I think, you know, every venue has pros and cons. I think Anfield and Liverpool came with a ton of pros. Um, I think it was right for us to look to refresh. I think the whole concept of magic is, it's a celebration and, 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 and finding new venues is a big part of that. So I think whilst fans love the fact that St. James's was right in the heart of Newcastle, um, you know, doesn't mean we were going to be there forever. And I think what we've taken it to is a new city, a new stadium that isn't quite the same, but you know, loads and loads of benefits and attractions. Um, we're hoping for you know, a great crowd. Anybody who's going to go to the game will see a great atmosphere. Um, and um, listen, it shouldn't... Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I just think the whole experience is going to be hugely positive. So, you know, really excited about it. Like all sports, we're being marginalised uh, through other forms of entertainment, but most significantly by the world of Premier League football. And when you're getting marginalised, you, you know, you um, perhaps become too self-critical. You perhaps look to chop and change too often. You perhaps believe there's a silver bullet out there. And as a sport, I think we've often um, search for that. I think we know we've got something good and then you get a bit sort of dogmatic about it's good, it's good, it's good and why does nobody else buy into that? You know, and I think we've got to recognise that the, the world of sport is significantly different. It's hugely competitive uh, and probably a little bit more holding our nerve, you know, being ambitious, absolutely, holding our nerve and all getting behind it. Listen, and, and, and critically, unity in the sport is, is absolutely right. Unity amongst clubs, unity with RFL unity with uh, lower division clubs and community game you know we all have to be bought into uh, 
you know, the sport's future. Is that an important part of your role then, and all, all the politics going on between Super League and rugby football, you know, Championship and League One, and everyone's got their own interest in that? Like, you've almost got to act peacemaker between all these groups. Yeah, I mean, I think um, having worked in sport for a long time and you know, the politics, politics of sport go hand in hand, same in Premier League circles uh, and, and a constant battle. I think what we can't be is consumed by that. You know, I think what we have to do is set a clear vision of where we're going, um, be, you know, positive and proactive and hope our, our you know, our hope fundamentally our actions bring people with us. I do think the future is a very, very strong elite flagship competition that everybody wants to be in that stimulates interest in young people who want to play the game, young people who want to come and watch it, and for that interest to not trickle down, but that interest to flow out through the game. And unless we build a really, really strong flagship competition that every really gets behind, that people want to be in, and, and you know that's the governing body, that's junior leagues, low leagues, community games, unless we have that flagship, you know, we are going to struggle. Now, what we can't do is be consumed by politics. You know, we, we, we have to get that unity through action and through belief and through vision rather than politics. It's not naive. I'm not naive enough to think that that won't crop up and need dealing with uh, and, and actually, you know, set a vision and everybody's going to jump on board. You know, won't be that simple. But I think sometimes and people in the game longer than me will know that we have uh, ended up in a quagmire of, of politics and a lack of progress. And uh, I think Above all things, we've got to avoid falling back into that trap again. It's almost as if this weekend, some people have already decided that it's going to be a failure, whatever happens, whatever attendances are announced at the weekend. It's important, though, I guess, as a sport, that we do take risks, even if they don't always pay off. Yeah, and it's... Um, you're right, and, and as a sport, we've done that. Um, and as a sport, we should celebrate that. And it's really interesting, because everybody I spoke to outside of the game is just talking about uh, Easter, New Camp, Anfield. Wow, something big's happening. And then you kind of turn and look internally and it's, oh, I'm not sure that was the right decision. And yeah, you're absolutely right. We've got to break that mentality and we've got to change it. And, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, something I've certainly got to lead the charge to change that because uh, unless we all get behind it and we all say, isn't it brilliant that a sport, you know, Super League can take, uh, has got the uh, has got the foresight and, and, and ultimately the courage to go to this big venue and celebrate it? You know, that's a really good thing, and let's get behind it. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the, the big stage. You know, we, we, we seem to do well, but uh, like you said, a, a huge win, and I thought it was a a huge uh, wrap on our defensive effort, especially from the forward pack. You know, it was up against the wall for large periods of that game, and uh, especially on our own try line. And I thought they worked hard from the inside to make it easy for us, us backs. And attacking wise as well, they ran really hard. You know, it was really good. It's, it's just it makes the game simple for us backs. I reckon the forwards won us that game, and you know, us backs just put, put a, a bit of a score on. But you know, their effort was absolutely outstanding. See, just two points and, and just a penalty before half time is a great effort for any team, even scoring 55 points or whatever. That defensive effort was super. Exactly. You know, how many times do you see a, a team not score, score a try and super? You know, they're normally like evenly, evenly matched. So that just shows our, our huge, huge effort in, in defence, not, uh, not just attack, which is a credit to the boys, really. It's a difficult league to call from our side of things the results are uh, inconsistent for all teams but that's a big result for you in terms of moving up the table yeah like I said it, uh, the, league, the whole league's in inconsistent except for St Ellen's they've been the standout team uh, for me but uh, there's not too much of a big gap between the middle and, uh, and the top top three or four obviously Saints are walking away with it so you know if we, if we could pick up a couple of more couple more points you never know where we could end up come end of the season Good chance of any team really ended up in that uh, top five. Scoring tries in front of the cop end, what did that feel like? Oh, it was awesome, you know, it's my second time of asking. Uh, we won here with the Kiwis, but I didn't manage to get on the score sheet at all. But, you know, to score at the, score at the cop end is you know, a proud moment for me and for, for my boys as well, you know. They'll be watching at home and seeing me do that, so really good. A week off next week, not a week off you'd, you'd want without being in the cup, but I guess a nice chance to refresh yourselves with some big games in the league coming up. Yeah, we'll be training hard during the week, but like I said, we'll, we'll have a rest uh, the next weekend. But uh, yeah, it'll be a good game to review and you know fix up on uh, some things, especially attacking wise and you know a bit, a bit of defence. But uh, yeah, it's nice to get a, a huge win and going into a, a little a little bit of a break after after five days of hard training. 
not good for the nerves. So um, yeah, it was fantastic. A great effort from you know one to seventeen. The boys absolutely uh, just ripped in for each other today. They're just defending like their life's depending on it, and um, that's what we need. We need what we said. We need everyone to be on. And, and against the quality Saints outfit, you know, you can never you can never write off Saints, can you? As you've seen in the past. So we knew they'd get their say, and yeah, the boys just did enough to hang on. Yeah, we've got a few scousers in there like Matty G and, and, and Fozzie who, um, who, and, and Ryan Morgan as well, who's obviously still. On a, on a year long loan, so yeah, there, there were a lot of Saints fans in there as well. So, but uh, yeah, just just to win, win against the quality side and win in the fashion you do, it's um, it's a happy dressing room tonight. Danny, you've you've lost a couple of really tight games recently. How important is it that you come out on the right side of that? Because conceding as late as you did, it could have been a heart, but you know the excuse was there. But your boys, perfect defence at the start of extra time, and you get the win. Yeah, it was. Um, they are they are huge because if, if you lose games like that, they can they can take about they can take about three four weeks to get over. So it has the absolute opposite effect. The um, the confidence you can gain from winning them tight games, and like I say, against them, the, the best team in the competition as well. You know, for the for the lads, confidence going forward. You know, it's definitely something to build on. You know, the one the areas that we need to improve and get better at. Um, we started started both halves um, poorly again, which you know we're trying to fix up. And uh, but like I said, the effort there from one to seventeen, I thought the forwards were, were immense in the middle as well today, and, and the halfbacks were, were, were a lot better this week from from what we questioned of them at Magic Weekend as well. So everyone all, all over the field improved, and uh, we could tell they just they just they'd do anything to get that win today. People will look at Saints and say, well, they left a couple out, but that was still a really strong Saints team, and Tony Ray was with us in commentary. Yeah. No hesitation, the best team has won today, you've outplayed the best team in the competition. Yeah, it's, it's funny, you look, you look at their team sheet and you think, oh well a few, a few are missing, but then you look at the guns who they're bringing in and it's, they've, they've got so much quality within the within the ranks there. So yeah, they'll let, they might have left a few out with a couple of niggles, but you know, they're, they're the top of the table outfit is, uh, and, and the best team in the competition so far. So yeah, I think we, we just wanted that game today and we wanted that win and uh, yeah, like I said, I couldn't be, couldn't be prouder of the boys. Everybody's written you off. Before a ball was kicked, everyone had written you off. You'll be back in the championship in 12 months. This shows everyone, doesn't it? London are alive and kicking, aren't they? Yeah, I think we've showed people throughout the year. No, I think um, it's not the first time we've, we've shot teams, and um, I'm sure it won't be the last. So uh, people, people write us off. We don't, we don't care what, what uh, said outside these these four walls. We know we're capable of love, and um, again, we've, we've come up with a fantastic performance. So definitely want to build them. Kelsey, congratulations, uh, back into the Challenge Cup final. How's it feel to win the semi-final this afternoon? It's an amazing feeling to get through to the final and I'm just so proud of the girls that we put on an amazing performance today. Everyone on the pitch really ran the blood to water and we just can't wait for the final now in Bolton. Obviously you were expected to win and win comfortably. To put 100 points on the team, that's some achievement. Like, in training we've really just focused on our defence, like we really wanted to keep the, the scoring low and our scoring high and we've really worked hard and yeah we were we weren't expecting to win because you never know what can happen in Challenge Cup games, anyone can win but we are really excited and we're I'm just buzzing with the girls in the performance. And of course you now know you're facing Leeds in the final repeat of last year, so close yeah. last year, Yeah. a great opportunity for revenge. Yeah definitely, it's definitely redemption time and we can't wait to right the wrongs that we did last year after the heartbreak and we, we want to win it this year and we're going to go all guns blazing and we'll really try to put on a show for everyone that's going to come watching Bolton. Obviously there's been plenty of uh, media coverage before the final, uh, before the semi-final, plenty of fans following your journey throughout this Super League season, a great travelling attendance today as well and plenty of them will be with you in Bolton as well. Definitely, but we can't fault the cast fans, like they're really getting behind us now, we can't wait to see how many turn up in Bolton to try and get us through that final we really will need the fans to push us through it's going to be a hard game and hopefully we'll get the win and they'll get what they want in i think if we look back at major trophies the men won the regal trophy in 94 or 93 i can't remember the challenge cup in 86 it's a long time yeah but the castle brothers are town ready for silverware definitely and we want to bring it back to cast and we want to show them all the hard work going in it's for them especially for such a long time since cast have won any silverware we want to be the ones that bring it back here we got echo trinity Brand new team in the uh, Nigerian uh, Rugby League. Tell me, because a lot of people will be thinking this is complete madness, uh, setting up a rugby league in a, a completely new country. How is this going to work and uh, why will it work, first of all? No, it's going to work because we have people with passion. We have young kids 
you know, who want to do something with their lives, you know, in rugby league is a sport that can, you know, that can give them that opportunity in life. So yeah, it's 100% going to work. We have 10 teams already, so you know, we can, we can do it. Yeah. And a, lot, a lot of talk about expansion at the moment, things like New York and Ottawa and, and Toronto and Sydney. But you're actually setting up a competition on its own. You're not in, inviting teams into the uh, the English competition. You're, you're actually just setting up a whole brand new competition to to stand on its own. Yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah. So you know we have ten teams, and and what we're trying to do is um, each team will partner with a Super League team. You know that's that's what we're trying to um, aim for and to just get get the game you know recognised in Nigeria will have a population of 200 million people you know and with that 200 million there's 70 million of those are aged between 17 and 29 so that's a young population so you know we, if we do it right if, we, if, we, if people see opportunities you know like football you know we'll get a lot of people involved. Yeah, we've seen football in the past, obviously, in the in the World Cup, Nigeria's successes and, and failures in that. What is it about rugby league that's going to attract the Nigerian people? Well, like I said, it's a it's a sport that changes lives. It's a dynamic sport. For me, it changed my life. You know, um, in, in London, and what, when 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 I went there, you know, I just I've seen the talent out there, just pure athletes. You know, it's completely you know mind blowing. You know how ridiculously fast and strong. You know, um, people are in, in Nigeria, and if you can just coach them the right way and you can get things done, then I said it would be a force to be reckoned with, seriously. And we're always talking really about finding new uh, players to bring into the sport. This is the whole new uh, millions and millions of potential new players to come into the uh, the game across the world. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, we've got we've already got people of Nigerian um, heritage playing in the Super League and Championship. You know, so and in, in NRL. So um, we, we all, you know, we've got Rob Warranty, like you know, we've got Will Sharp, you know, that like people know in the championship, you know, we have the and the boys breaking through now in Super League or, you know, all Nigerian heritage. So we, you know, we have, you know, we have the boys, so we just need to, you know, get everybody in together and people support us and, you know, believe in what we're, you know, our goal and what we can do. Got the Rhinos, got Trinity involved, and obviously you've got uh, the, a big international competition coming up as well. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we've also got Lon um, London going to be involved soon, um, but the international competition is going to be it's called the Middle East Africa Championship, and um, that's going to be um, in October. We've got Cameroon, Morocco, and Ghana We're going to all come to Lagos. So it's going to be you know good you know good advert for rugby league in Africa because you know we have um, we've got the games televised. So for me, it's going to be outside the World Cup. It's the only one of the only games that's going to be televised, you know. So we've done pretty well to get that done. So um, yeah, it's going to. I'm looking forward to it. It's a big challenge to you know to promote rugby league in Africa. Obviously, it's a great idea partnering with the Super League clubs because we immediately got uh, people uh, in this country who are going to uh, immediately have a new team to adopt. Exactly, exactly. And you know, these these kits are going to be nice, you know. Uh, so you know, this is a Nigerian. In national jersey for you know that will, that will be um, using to play in the competition. So look, we're going to be doing some great stuff, and people just need to um, support us and keep and keep tuned. Tony, welcome back to Rugby League. What, Thank have you. You, what have you found in your first week or so at Hull Kingston Rovers? Yeah, it's been been great. Um, good bunch of people who um, are keen to you know improve from where we are at the moment. You know, keen to get further up the ladder they want to improve and and uh, yeah it's just been uh, very good so far. I felt for the players on Sunday I, th I thought they put in a terrific effort there's a few reasons why we lost and um, and we need to improve on that by all means but I felt for them a bit I could see how much they effort they put into it and it would have been a nice little reward for them early on in you know, in a in a week that's a tough week for for players when uh, new coaches come in and change of coach, and you know it's it's not the easiest of times for for people. So would have liked to have uh, seen them you know get the points. Not to be, but uh, we'll get in there working hard, and you know that's what they've shown me so far that they're prepared to work hard, and um, so I'm excited about working with them. You're renowned for improving clubs wherever you've been. The club is undoubtedly in a better state when you've left it than when you arrived. This is a bit different, though, is it? It's a bit more short-termism about this at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, but I'd still like to have that effect um, in the time that I'm here. And, uh, you know, how much effect uh, we're yet to find out. But I'll give it a, everything I've got. And um, 
I'd like to see that uh, this club is in a much better position and I'd like to be able to say that by the time I leave and um, I'm working as hard um, to do that and get it in a position where um, whether I'm here in the future or not that it's strong and, um, and on the right sort of track and um, yeah it's um, it's been interesting so far and you know it's it's been a really busy time um, I've trying to get to know people in a short period of time uh, quickly and um, trying to get some you know uh, focus in areas that we can improve quickly and that's important it's about prioritizing what we can what we can change and what we can't and um, but also enjoying what we're doing as well and sometimes when you're under pressure it's hard to get the enjoyment part of it and um, so it's important that we do and um, and we're trying to do that by working hard but smart and you know, making some inroads into areas that we know that we need to improve and you know, that gives you some satisfaction and self-worth and confidence as well so it's all coming together and you know over the next few weeks I'm sure we'll make some uh, really good uh, advances. I said I wanted to see you with a shiny medal you've got one how does it feel to be a Challenge Cup final winner on the field? Oh do you know what I mean I'm still a little bit emotional I think the final whistle went and I just burst into tears you know three years I've waited um, I've been in you know three Challenge Cups twice as a as an injured spectator you know always supporting the girls but to get out there today and to I think I put in a good shift as well, you know, I'm quite happy with my performance and, you know, it was a tough game, the best best opponents to come up against and to, you know, to, to be the best, you've got to beat the best and that's what we did today and I think credit goes to our girls and that defence on the try line. Everyone said the pressure was on Leeds going into this final, you were the defending champions, they were the big overwhelming favourites, you've upset the odds again today and it's always Leeds, you always end up with silverware. <laughs> So be it, you know, I think we're quite a, a, a humble team in the fact that, yeah, we had a lot of pressure coming in in, in terms of being the, in the holders, but they were favourites to go in, but our mindset was very much our game our way. Um, yeah, they've got some phenomenal players, don't get me wrong, they've got some standout England. You know, 2021 is going to be full of Cath Cath Tigers, you know, you can't discredit them, they're phenomenal, but when we play as a unit and as a team, which is what I think we did today, there was some great individual performances, but generally we played as a team and that defence, I think, you know, we, we got some good ball and attack, attack was phenomenal, it was great, you know, we composed. But that defence was just, we, we were, on, the, we were on, our, on our try line for such a long time, but we didn't get them through. So, you know, great, great set of girls. We were watching on the sidelines when Castleford nilled you at the jungle earlier in the season. It must have been sweet, A, for that defence, as you say, but B, to get that win, to get that trophy back again. Do you know what? Challenge Cup's a really weird thing, and we've got them in a, few, a couple of weeks in the league, and, you know, that'll, that might turn up a different result again. But today was about today, and at Challenge Cup, you know, we've got Halifax playing later on. That, that shouldn't really happen by the book, so... Anything can happen on a Challenge Cup day and, you know, we, they are just brilliant, but we've got the silverware, we've got it back again and we get to keep it for another year. It's absolutely tricking it down. So last one from me, obviously, you're not bother, you don't care. Um, I'm the one who's soft in the rain. All the setbacks over the years, obviously you wouldn't want to go through that again, but was it worth it to wait that long to get that trophy around your neck? Without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, do you know what? A win with the, with the girls is better, a win when you've waited three years is just unbelievable. I just can't believe it, I think. I, I haven't got any words to put into it, but I've worked really hard to be on that pitch today. And uh, for the first time in my life, I'll say I earned it, so. Final, final one, how are you going to celebrate this? Uh, probably a little cup of tea, a biscuit, um, probably just have a bit of stretch off, rehab and uh, a couple of glasses. Because usually players come off the pitch, they smell the sweat. You stink of champagne, you must be all over you. <laughs> Somebody's got to take it, haven't they? I'd rather smell champagne than sweat. <laughs> We've obviously had, as you say, rugby league's inclusive, but there's been a, an issue in Australia with Izzy Falau and his comments. I guess it's disappointing to hear those, and you know anyone who thinks straight thinks it's a disappointment as well, but it must be heartening that there are many people coming out and saying, no, this is unacceptable in this day and age. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the Australian uh, rugby union have, have done the right thing, absolutely. He was warned. And when you're in a position of influence, um, you you are a, you are a role model, whether you you want to be or not. And he's, he's not oblivious to that. Um, and I think uh, Thumper in Bambi said it best: if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So he, he didn't need to go on, you know. He, he, and it's a difficult one when you talk about religion because of how important religion is to people. Um, but it's it doesn't give you a right to. 
you know, put down a whole section of, of society. So I think what's what's happened with um, with Israel Flow and what the uh, the stance Australian Rugby Union's taking is the right thing. And I think him trying to get a GoFundMe page to pay for his legal fees when he makes millions of dollars <laughs> is just uh, indicative of a bloke. So you know, the, the proof is always in the pudding. Yeah, it's not, it's not religion that's the issue, it's the person rather. Absolutely, yeah, there's, and, and there's lots of religious people, who've come, people who, who are religious who've come out and, and said that that's, that's not their views, that's, it's, that's just his views. And if he's hiding behind religion to be homophobic, then that's, that's his choice. You know, there is freedom of speech and all that. Um, but, you know, have, have some balls and just be homophobic, don't hide behind your religion. Because um, that's not fair on others. So, But he's been found out and... Yeah, pe- people aren't stupid and they can see something th- for what it really is. Through your experience, is, it, is that something that's happening less and less these days is it, to, to you personally? Or? I, I am very lucky. Not I've experienced very, very little uh, homophobic language, behaviour, carrying on. There's a lot of people who don't, who are six foot four, rugby player, who are perhaps a bit more effeminate, who don't, who, you know, maybe stand out a little bit more, who are have not been as, as lucky as I have, you know, and they're, they're, they're the brave ones, they're the real heroes who walk around with their sexuality as a, as a, ba- a real badge of pride, and um, I'd like to say it's something that's happening less, but I don't, it's, you know, it's well documented about, you know, those girls who were attacked on the, on the train, we've got um, people protesting outside schools about, you know, whether people should be taught that LGBT people exist, so I'm, I'm glad my kids know that I exist. Um, so you know, it's 50 years since the, the LGBT movement started, and it is—it's really sad that we're still having to talk about you know the, these issues that are happening in Israel for now, and people being attacked on trains and schools and things like that. It's, um, I'd, I'd like to say things are getting better, but you know the news suggests that it's—it's it's an ongoing struggle. First of all, congratulations scoring a try in the Challenge Cup final. What did that mean to you? Um, just yeah, a bit of a blur at the minute. You know, I'm a bit speechless. Um, Re- <laughs> really enjoyed, really enjoyed that game, um, and yeah, like Chase Clark got me a quick play of the ball, and it all opened up for me, and um, just just went for the line, and, and there it, there it was. I was over the moon. Massive underdogs coming into the game, but it's a one-off game. Form means nothing. Yeah, yeah, you know, we have been struggling for form recently, but in in our four walls at Warrington Wolves, there uh, we we have a real strong belief, and there's a lot of naysayers out there, a lot of people questioning us, and uh, we don't mind that, you know, we don't mind the underdog tag, um, and. Like, like we knew, we knew we had that performance in us, and we saved our best performance of the season for the big game. So that's a, a good sign going into the back end of the season. 12 0 up at half time. Obviously, they came back with a try from Theo Farge, but Darrell Clark killed it off. He had a great, as many of you decided today, had a great game. Over the moon for Daz. He, he's he's been so consistent all year, and uh, deservedly got that Lance Todd Trophy. And, and I know I know he'll enjoy that. Um, and you know, I, I feel lucky to play with play with such quality players like like that. But. Um, you know, 12 0 up at half time, and we knew that Saints were going to come out firing in the second half, but we kept them at bay. And, um, you know, when Dad scored that try, it was a real good moment. We really enjoyed it in front of our fans. Uh, yeah, just them little moments probably stay with me for the rest of my life, to be honest. Yeah, plenty behind the goal, journey on in that second half. They always say it's always your year. There's one more target then this year, and I guess building on this final, you've got that uh, grand final in your sights. One down, one to go. Hey, yeah, um, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Uh, and we're going to enjoy this, don't don't get me wrong, but then, you know, we've got one, one more big one to go for. Thank you. You, you were defending brilliantly from the start, but your try changed the tone of the game, really. Does that, I mean, does that make you proud? Did yeah, it, it, yeah, I mean, um, it was when I scored, it was a bit of a bit of a blur, because I got a bit of a whack to the head as well, so, uh, you know, a bit of a blur, but, yeah, yeah, you can see. Um, but, but um, you know, yeah... Yeah, so like I said, like I said, I, I don't, I, I don't really think it was a turning point in the game. It was, um, it was a good moment, but I just feel like there was a lot, there was a lot of big plays from us. You know, Jack Hughes playing at half back, and he, he gave Ben Murdoch and the ball for that try. Um, Bryson Goodwin knocking the ball out of Tommy Makinson's hands when he's just about to score one of them spectacular tries like he does. A lot of big moments uh, when when you games like that, and it was little one percent efforts, and, and I'm so proud of my teammates. The belief must have grown after you'd scored though, and then and then to get the second yeah. well, to go into halftime. Yeah, well, I just I just said then we, we've got a strong belief in this group, and um, you know there's a lot of people outside of our four walls who who, who do question us and, and who who don't maybe don't believe, but that's fine by us because uh, we we know what we've got in that group and. Uh, 
we know when it comes to the big games, we really can turn it on. So, so I'm, I'm over the moon. Um, you know, lost two last year, so so happy to finally get over that winners line. Does that make it sweeter that people doubt in you? No, no, we we don't we don't care about other people's opinions. Um, we only care about what's 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 in our four walls. Um, so so you know, yeah, we we play for each other. We play for our play for our families and and. We're just, we're just proud of uh, what we dished up today. The winner at Wembley, and man of the match. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, man of the match, I, when it's, Brownie shouted me over, and obviously Brownie got his hat trick today, and I thought it was outstanding, so um, I don't know. I'll, I'll take it. I'll, t I'll take the win. I've just, we just wanted to win. You've had a great career. You've scored loads of tries. We know all that, over 200 of them. What, were that, what were it like today to race 70 metres or whatever and score a try oh, here? It was, it was mega. I mean, it, it was a big point for us as well. We went 12 nil down, and I thought, you know, we was letting them out, out there end a bit too easy, giving pen penalties and errors away, and so um, we probably needed it at that time. It was um, it was spe it, special place, obviously. I mean, walking out here yesterday was special, and then obviously stepping foot on there today after the Challenge Cup final, it was um, yeah, it was surreal. A lot's been made about this cup and and the what it's you know yeah. what its merits, but you've experienced it all now. What, what would your message be to players who are playing in it next year? Oh, it's mega, absolutely mega. You, you don't get a chance to play in many cup finals and for trophies and stuff throughout your whole career, no matter if you're at the top level or whatever level. So. It's obviously special. It's a real special venue, and um, you know when the Northern Rail Cup was about, that, that was pretty special down at Blackpool, and you always had a good weekend there. So um, this is um, tenfold. What's it been like then, as a player, knowing you're coming to Wembley? You've had a bit of a wait before you got here. What's it? What's that bit been like? Yeah, old now, yeah. Um, again, surreal. Um, it probably didn't sink in until probably Thursday, and then because we was obviously travelling down on Friday morning. And um, your phone's going off constantly saying good luck messages. And then, you know, we did the shirt presentation. You're, you're ready to fight someone. Or, you know, <laughs> at that point in time, you know, the, the airs on the back of your neck stood up. And, you know, Beans came in and John Keir and Tubbs, they all, you know, got quite emotional when they was talking. Keith did a video and stuff. And um, it was really good, really good. The whole experience has been outstanding. Were you nervous or anything? What was it? I mean, what were going through your mind when you came out to play? Um, do you know what? It didn't cross my mind once about... Losing, I've lost a cup final before, and the feeling is humble. It, it's the worst in the world. But we've got a real good group here, and I just felt that we was ready. We was ready yesterday, and um, going into the game today, we was all saying the right things, and yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> uh, you got, obviously got man of the match. Did you hear it when it got announced that you'd been selected? I didn't, to be honest. I mean, we obviously you're in the thick of it, but um, Brownie did. <laughs> I think Brownie was looking out for his name. I'll give him some stick later. But um, yeah, he's, you know, when he said that, I thought, wow, you know, that's pretty special. Obviously, Ray French legend, and to get the first one, yeah, it's pretty special too. You'd have been pretty sick, though, wouldn't you, if you'd have got a hat trick, and not got man of the match? Oh, I'd have been fuming. I'd have, been, I'd have took that trophy off me. I'd have said, give me that trophy. <laughs> no, he's done. He, he was class today, Brownie. Um, he hadn't trained all week as well. He had um, a bit of a, a bit of a knot, so he was, he was icing all week. And you know, full credit to him. He's got himself ready, and he, he's played upstanding couple of days celebrations no doubt but you know the playoffs are still very much on the horizon as well yeah it's sort of out of our hands a bit I mean we can only knock off the games one at a time but um, yeah we'll be just we'll, we'll go to next week we'll, we'll celebrate tonight and tomorrow and then I'll probably come in Tuesday Wednesday maybe if we're feeling up to it <laughs> two tries play of the match champion not been a bad fight, mate. no not at all but Credit to all the girls who brought in as one, played as one and put 100% effort throughout the whole 80 minutes, so couldn't be more proud of everyone within the team. You say the whole 80 minutes and that's been proven the last two weeks, obviously you were 14 nil down to Saints here, last week of one, you were 8 nil down to Castleford. You just seem to be nervous, nervous in the inside, you just know you just have to keep going. No, well, we all trust everyone in the inside and outside of us and we bought in as a team and it just shows that you just got to keep the determination to know that you're going to come back from those ones that you get down, but you can't let it stop you, and you just got to keep fighting for the whole game because anything can happen. The, the men had a reputation for years of being able to win the grand final from fifth or fourth or whatever. You finished third this year, you had the tough semi final, you've come here again today. This very time just knows how to win the game. Just shows how much we all put in as a team throughout the whole season and it just shows how much that we do want to win and we do want to put the work in for everyone within the team so we can be on, out on top at the end of it. Tell me a bit about your captain, Courtney Hills. You actually won the one last week. 
She just seems to be a master out there on the field. She's an absolute legend within the team. She knows how to pull everyone up when we're behind. She keeps everyone calm and she's a true legend of the game. And your coach, uh, Adam Cuthbertson, obviously he's going away with England in a few weeks, but what a job he's done over the past couple of years. Oh, he's a credit to him. He keeps everyone motivated within, and this training session throughout the whole build-up of this just shows and he puts so much trust in ourselves as a team, collectively, that we can go out and put these games in. How big a celebration will it be tonight? When will it end? I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know what to say anymore, because <laughs> you keep proving me wrong which is not necessarily the greatest thing well, you just the hardest thing even I can't even speak anymore <laughs> basically you keep doubting me and we keep proving you wrong <laughs> I'm not the best motivation in the world but that's uh, three finals in a row now Leeds have done against Castleford you obviously yeah. had disappointment last year in the grand final against Wigan with the rain stayed nice and dry today you're on the field <laughs> you've got a medal again some up being champions do you know what? The final whistle went and I didn't even know it had gone. Um, we knew that the clock was counting down and we checked with the ref and we was like, oh yeah, that is the clock. So we knew there was 40 seconds left or whatever. And then we heard the crowd shouting 10 and then I didn't know when Tash went with the ball whether that was it or not. And I was like, oh, what? Oh, ah. So it was a bit like uh, that, that disbelief. Like, how do we keep doing this? Uh, and it's just a case that Leeds Rhinos keep turning up on a, on a final day. And uh, much like the men, you know, when they're put under, under the pressure, they do it as well. So... You know, we've been at a, at a lot of lot of kind of motivational speeches this week about this badge and what it means to wear it, and I think today kind of proved it that all buy in. Um, you know, and that was for that was for this badge and that's for each other. So uh, ma massive uh, amazement to come away with that. Can you actually explain how? Because last week you're losing 14 0 against Saints, you come back and win in the last play of the game. You're eight 0 down here against Castleford, who many say will be the best side this season. Yeah. But you didn't look like you were concerned about going 8 0 down. You just got on with what you do. Do you know what? That's massive credit to Cuspo because I, I've I kind of said this season that he's maybe not as harsh as I want him to be sometimes. And sometimes I think the girls need a bit of a roasting. But actually, his composure in the changing rooms um, has led us through. And he just he's, his confidence in us, his like sheer genuine belief that we can do this, is what got us through. You know, we went in the sheds at half time and he was like would you agree that we've got another gear to step up and we're like yeah 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 you know and I think the biggest thing for us is the fitness like we, we figured at the end of the first half that the forwards are tied into Cass and we know that we get hammered with fitness we get tested every other week you know like and we hate it but it's games like this so that it, you know it's the end of the season people are carrying knocks and stuff but it's that resilience to keep going it's that all buy in and it genuinely is that kind of all buy in it's all for one person person one thing so um yeah, that, that, it's Cuthbo's belief in us, and that's genuinely what carried us through. Kyle, yes. congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Final winners yep. again. Yep. Uh, how's it feel? Oh, amazing, mate. You know, honestly, uh, <clears throat> mate, I'll be honest, it was a bit of a different feel this week. First time I was here, uh, obviously, I, I'd come in for my first year at St. Helens. I was, I was playing at Wakefield week in, week out, and uh, I remember the whole build-up. I was, I was nervous uh, when we came to the stadium and done the tour that everything was like, wow, it's enormous, do you know what I mean? And I think, obviously, the, the six years I've spent at Saints and playing in some big games and, uh, you know, obviously playing at Wembley in August, this time round when I came, I was I was OK with everything, and I was I was so relaxed this week that uh, I don't, more probably more relaxed because I, I knew what I was going to get from everybody else around us. We're such a we're such a good team, you know. We've been beaten in the league seven times in, in, in 59 rounds of Super League rugby, and you know, uh, what, what, one thing that I said when I done a Radio Five live piece was, uh, you know. All week we've heard how Salford have, uh, basically everyone was going into Salford, weren't they? I'd have done the same myself and everybody was right behind Salford, but I think a lot of people, and, and, and I've read a lot of tweets off ex-pros and, and, and journalists now and whatnot, and they were all going into Salford and, and, and what I realised is that as a nation we're a bit, we like the underdog, don't we? When I hope tonight that we rectify that and people sit back and, and applaud what a really good, great side this is. And to win the league by 16 points, is, you, you, you sure know why you are the team? But, but that never got spoke about, did it? We all, we all speak about uh, how well, you know, how well Salford have done and how well London have done. Look, 
I don't want to sound arrogant, but you know, London won nine games, it's not good enough. And yet we're celebrating that. We're not celebrating that this team has demolished a 124 year record. Like, come on, let's wake up and smell the coffee, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I just think that I'm so, pl I'm so proud and so grateful to be in this team and in this with this group of players that you know you've got to be you've got to be doing a lot of right things to play for this side and, and, and I'm, again I'm just I'm so grateful that, that I get to play in such a big occasion like tonight. Obviously how does the feel when some people were perhaps yeah. questioning Saints mentality in big games but you come here and you you put that to put it to Yeah, that yeah I mean look I'm not gonna go into certain factors that happened within that game at Wembley and Credit Warrington, they were, the, the, you know, they handled it a bit better than us. We had a bit of adversity chucked our way early on, and I do believe we were the best side for the opening 25 minutes. But Warrington managed to hang in there and give a sucker punch, and, and we never recovered from that, you know. So, uh, but what I will say is this team's been building now for the last sort of two and a half seasons, from when Justin came into that Luke Gale drop goal to then the next year winning the league leaders falling short in two big games now this year we've won the league leaders got to another, got to two finals and won one of them so this group's got legs and this group will go on and do and do many great things I think Luke Thompson 73 minutes out there unbelievable, to make, unbelievable. the match the platform yeah. put together by the Packers yeah. have made it, uh, and they have got for the victory. You know, I've, I've, I've run out of words here for Luke Thompson, obviously, playing front row myself. But there's very few props who can do both sides of the game equally as well. You know, you genuinely, if you're a ball carrier, you're not the great defender, and you have other people in that system who who will cover for you there. And but Tomo is the all-round, you know, athlete. The world's at his feet. I really do mean that. I hope he's, you know, I hope he's with us for a long time. But you know, the world is at his feet. He's a He's a fantastic, phenomenal athlete, and he works so, so hard. And um, and a bit like Morgan Knowles, and Morgan Knowles is such an unsung hero for us. And uh, I thought he was tremendous tonight. And you know, I, I thought there was, I thought there were so many leaders out there tonight that it was really hard to pick from. But I do absolutely agree with you. For Luke Thompson, you forget he's only 23, that's uh, 24. Sorry, <sighs> phenomenal. You mentioned the turnaround since Justin Holbrook's come in. Obviously, he's going to be a massive loss for the club. But what's he meant to you personally as a coach? Yeah, look, mate, I'll be honest, uh, Justin Holbrook, uh, we had a serious chat at the start of the year. I've already I spoke about this early on in the year that, you know, I got told that I was I was right down in the pecking order in, in last off season. And, you know, I had some, uh, I had some a difficult conversation with him and, you know, I was... I was nearly ready for for being shown the door kind of thing, but you know I, I uh, look I don't want I don't want to have done all my career and, and try to prove people wrong and and, and went away and worked and worked so hard that that uh, um, I, I tried to just make myself noticed as much as I can and and uh, you know like I say thankfully from being told that I was at the bottom of the pecking order to to play in 28 games now and and being here talking to you guys with another ring on my finger and I'm over the moon and and, and, and he challenged. Me and, and he got the best out of me when perhaps probably maybe for a couple of years I got a little bit comfortable and, and, and needed to find a needed to find a new not a new challenge because I hate saying that because if I was a fan listening to that I'd be fuming but um, you know I just needed I needed to relight my fire again and, and and like I say the only way I can do that is by working hard and being as fit as I possibly can be. Final one from me, cliche question at these times, grand final, Saints fans are magnificent uh, support all throughout the year and especially tonight as well. Of course, mate. You know this ground's not been a happy hunting ground, has it for for the fans? But you know that's two finals now that, that, that we've been in the last five years and, and two wins. So hopefully, like I say, slowly we're starting to turn that. And uh, again, I go back to what I said earlier on that, that this group's still building. It's scary to say we're still building. We're still we're always looking to improve. Even after that Wigan game, which was for me the best performance that I've seen from the Super League side in my time of like ten years now playing. And and uh, I'm not just saying that because, like I said, most of that first half, in fact, I wasn't even on that first. Now, so I was sat back thinking, bloody hell, we look like an NRL side here, do you know what I mean? But um, you know, but even from that we still went away, we still look to try and improve and, and get better and, and that's the type of group we are, we work hard and but uh, I tell you what, we're gonna enjoy the next few days together. Just looking at the last player of weeks, you've been incredibly calm. That's transferred to your team and the way you played tonight will almost on playground for the performance, would you say? Oh, I'm definitely happy here. Yeah. I think um, you know we played brilliant in the semi-final against Wigan, and, and obviously uh, uh, again tonight we're as good as we can play. So I'm really pleased with that.
and learning about Sue's perhaps from last year and, and the way you approach Wembley, is, is, is that kind of bearing on the way you approach these players? Uh, I, just think, I just think this year we've just had a real calming the way we've played, you know, we've played really calm and that's what, you know, going into the semi and, and, and tonight I wasn't nervous, I wasn't anxious, I just thought, you know, we've done all the work, it's just a matter of, it's the uncertainty that makes you worry, you know, you've got to go out and perform when it counts most and I'm just so happy for the players that have done that and it's probably been, um, you know, I look back at the two and a half years in the making so to finally get it, I'm happy. You've always deflected on the players, but this is as much about you because unfortunately you have to say farewell to you. When sort of like a scrum move comes off in a grand final, how proud does that make you feel? Oh, yeah, they're proud. I just think, you know, it's rewarding. You know, you do your homework and there was this. And I had to do a lot. You know, we haven't played softball since the middle of May, so... I had to watch a lot of games this week and you know, you sort of get the grand final, you're trying to be excited and you're half sort of fatigued yourself. So um, look, that's just one part of an 80 minute game, that's all that was. But uh, the, the effort that the boys displayed tonight, as I said, against a great Salford side, they, they were outstanding. We couldn't play any better and they, they kept coming at us, so I'm really happy. Do you feel like you've gone down a little bit now, assess what's happened over the last two years? You really need to win this tonight just to cut off how dominant you've been. Yeah, it just would have felt so hollow going home without knowing that we'd, we'd won the Super League trophy. I'm not denying that, but I couldn't promise we could win it because you know the boys had to, had to go out and earn it. And um, I just yeah, really content now knowing that we've, that we've won the Super League trophy. We've spoken to a lot of players over the last two years, particularly in, in times of triumph like tonight. Some obviously have had to wait their chance. Some have been even brutally honest with about what they need to do to get into your team, but every single one of them has nothing like love and respect for you. Does that mean almost as much as a trophy? Oh, definitely, you know, you know, and I feel the same way, you know, I love that, the bunch of players that I work with, you know, I said this week, it's, you know, they say I come in to work with a smile on my face, but it's because I love working with them, it's just, they're so easy to work with, and everything we ask them and the staff they do, and they don't whinge, they don't, you know, they're not complaining, they don't whine, they don't, you know, they just get on with it, and, you know, they're so easy to work with, 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 you know, you know, we, we had a squad of 30 and you know we could have played anyone and every time we did they stood up so I'm really happy. When you came to the competition, not everybody had heard of the name Justin Holder, but when you leave, you're leaving with a real legacy behind you. Again, it's really just been incredibly proud of yeah, I'm not worried about the league, so I'm just proud that we won tonight I'm just in there. and the way we've gone about it this year, you know, we I was so disappointed last year. It took me a long time to get over at the end of that season and us to set us up and go again and to, to finish 16 points per second is a huge effort and but you know we had to come and perform the night and I'm just so happy with you. Just fine, how are you gonna celebrate this? Because you deserve to take the credit for it. I know you won't probably have <laughs> But will you be able to enjoy it? Will you be have to wait maybe until you retire to really assess what you've done or you need to go get a beer? Yeah, no, I haven't even had a beer tonight, but I'm, I'm not uh, overly excited about that. I just, I just, within myself, I'm content that we've won, so I'll definitely have a couple of beers tonight and, and the next couple of days, but it's more of a satisfaction and, and a shock or, you know, I expected to win, but we had to play well, so I'm just so. That's so thrilled for him. And your members of Super League, is, is it a decent competition? Yeah, will, I'm, you be, will you be going back home extolling the virtues of the British game? Absolutely, you know, I, I love the competition, I think it's great, I think the, the way it's played is, is fantastic and you know, I've got nothing but great memories of, of, of this competition and not in particular this club. We've got great members of you and everything you've done in sport, thank you very much. Oh, thanks for that, appreciate it. Cheers, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks all of us. Thanks boys.